Who am I? Where did we come from? What's God like? If he does exist, does he really hear me when I pray? Would he want to meet me? Why do we suffer? Where can I find hope? God is closer than you think. God is closer than you think. The land of my fathers, so dear to me, the land where the poets and minstrels are free. I love the idea that Wales is full of poets and wandering minstrels. But the truth is that this nation has always been a land of song. Whether your taste runs from Shirley Bassey to Bryn Turvill, from Vaughan Williams to the Manic Street Preachers, there is no denying that the land of my fathers has always inspired generations of poets, minstrels, songwriters, musicians, actors, authors, painters, sculptors, architects and filmmakers. In fact, it has once been said that to be born here is not to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth, but with a song in your heart. Whether it's the sheer raw power of a rugby crowd singing Bread of Heaven, or the moving words read through tears at the funeral of a friend, or a brilliant piece of construction that takes our breath away and makes us feel so small. We've all had those moments where something inside of us is awakened, stirred, satisfied. Of course, you don't have to be Welsh to get that. Deep inside every human heart, there is this hunger, this drive. Question, why create? Why? Where does this desire come from to try and capture the magnificence of a place or a moment or an emotion in these swirls of paint or collections of words or moving melodies? Why are we so driven by this and why are we moved so deeply when somebody does it so well? What part of us comes alive when we connect with this basic need to create? The ancient Hebrew scriptures begin with a book called Genesis, literally the book of beginnings. And in its opening few verses, we're introduced to the God of all creation. One of the first things we learn about this God is that he is creative on the most incredible scale imaginable. He is the maker of the mysterious beauty of the far reaches of the cosmos. He is the designer of the breathtaking colors of sunset skies. He is the author of all the diversity of nature with its weird and wonderful creatures. The creator of the delicate design of a feather, the detailed intricacy of a leaf. We're told that all of life itself finds its beginning, its origin, its genesis in this creative spirit, in God himself, the divine spark of life. Just as an expert could look at a piece of art and tell you who made it, so in creation, we see the brushstrokes of a brilliant intelligence, a beautiful design. We see the style, the stamp, the very signature of God himself. And then we're told that into this finely tuned universe, on this little planet, the perfect environment for life to exist, God creates humanity people. And we find there this beautiful phrase, an incredible idea, entirely unique in all the history of human literature. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. 
male and female, he created them. Made in the image, the likeness of the God of creation, bearing some resemblance to the maker and shaper of existence itself. The unique claim of the Bible is that deep inside the heart of every human person is the imprint of his craftsmanship. We use this language all the time about family. Well, they're the image of their mother, or they're just the image of their brother, or whoever, relatives we share our lives with. Could it be that we were made to relate to the God who made us, made to share our lives with him? Could this ancient scripture actually contain a deep, deep truth about ourselves? What if we really are made in the image of our creative creator God? Our structures dominate the sky. Our technology reaches beyond the skies, stretches around the globe and connects us with people on the other side of the planet. We desperately share our pictures with the world. We craft our words to inspire, comfort or give hope. We make, we mold, we tinker, we doodle, we shape, we can't help but create. What other species on the planet is so drawn to beauty, is so deeply moved by wonder is so driven by this desire. And why? If you and I are just flesh and bone, a human-shaped bag of genes driven by this primal urge to survive, what possible benefit would we have in creating beauty simply for beauty's sake? Where does that come from? What if that passion that flows comes from a deep place within us that connects us with our true source, with the very spark of life itself? What if as we seek to discover beauty, we actually discover something about ourselves? Could it be that we create because we're made by a creator? And that as our own creative streak flourishes, we see something of the image of a creative creator God? What if that pleasure and satisfaction we feel is a taste of the creator's delight? the delight of a father God, whose heart thrills at the simple joy of watching us discover who he made us to be. Some of the early followers of Jesus picked up on this ancient truth about us and tried to live in the light of its implications. A leader called James wrote this to one church. With the tongue we praise the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who have been made in God's likeness. We have this incredible capacity to create, to create things that are good and beneficial. But at the same time, we also have this capacity to use the same creative force to beat people down rather than build them up. People who James reminds us have been made in God's likeness. Unlike God, not all that we create is good. And it breaks God's heart to see the children he made hurting and fighting. We have messed up his world. We have messed others up. We've messed up ourselves. We are a spoiled masterpiece. What would it be like if we fully grasped this truth, that every person is a person made in God's image? Not a piece of meat to be ogled over, not a problem to be avoided, not a profit to be gained, not a target for abuse, but a person made in his image, part of his masterpiece, the work of his hands, the child that he loves. How different would the world be if we could see the fingerprints of God in those we share our lives with and within ourselves? Think about it. Talk about it. Question.